Throughout my tenure in the Senate, I have made it a top priority to make the judiciary the very quiet but very important third branch of government more reflective of the vibrancy of New York's communities. My first nomination to the federal bench was Victor Marrero. There were no people of Puerto Rican ancestry on the federal district court at that time. And that worked out so well that when President Obama became president, three weeks into his presidency, I suggested he appoint Sonia Sotomayor of the Bronx to the United States Supreme Court, and he did. We have a Latina on the court. I am so proud of that. Recently, I recommended Edgardo Ramos, Puerto Rican ancestry, to the Southern District Court. He's a great lawyer with sterling credentials who will add more diversity to the bench. And I am proud to say I've nominated other people of color to the bench, too. Ray Loye, a brilliant Haitian-American, has been confirmed by the Senate and is now serving on the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. Bill Kuntz is headed to the Eastern District bench. And our first nominee to the District Court bench born in the Caribbean, Margot Brody, is working her way through the nomination process now. Now, everyone in this room knows how much diversity of representation matters. It matters at every level of government. Our judicial and legal system, so important, must represent and have representation from all communities. And for too long, the executive and judicial branches lagged behind the kind of diversity we have achieved in the Assembly and the State Senate and the United States Congress. Barack Obama shattered the ceiling as far as the executive branch is concerned, but I fight very hard to see that people from the Hispanic community are appointed to positions of power in the executive and judiciary branch. And I want you to know, you have a partner in Chuck Schumer who will work with you to add diversity. You can't just pay lip service to diversity. You have to walk the walk. So this is my promise to you. You continue to bring me top-notch candidates, one of whom I met here tonight. I'm not going to say who it is. <laughs> With first-rate legal minds, I will continue to make it my mission to get them on the bench. Jose K. Aymas Sonia Sotomayores. Mas Victor Mareros. Y mas Personas como Edgardo, Edgardo Ramos in La Comunidad Latino. So folks, keep them coming. I will continue to work for you. Now I also wanted to talk about immigration reform. I'm head of the Immigration Committee. We came close last year with the DREAM Act. Only a few votes away. And now I am working hard I never give up on immigra comprehensive immigration reform that will unite families and that will create an earned path to citizenship for so many who live here in the shadows. Every day I am meeting with my colleagues, even the conservative Republicans, and remind them how important it is to reform our economy and our security, how important it is for those things to pass immigration reform. People are finally starting to realize how important immigrants are to our community and to our economy. In the past month, there have been articles written about how in cities throughout the country that are losing their manufacturing base and population, the only businesses that keep those cities afloat are new businesses being opened by immigrants. On the security front, I ask my colleagues, they care about security in the hard right, right? 
I say, well, if you want to make our America safer, the status quo, where immigrants are forced to live in the shadows so we don't know who is here and why, or do you want a process where we can bring people out of the shadows and let them live full lives as American citizens? Last month, something amazing happened, my friends. The most conservative, or one of the two most conservative states in the country, Utah, said that they would not be deport people who were not here legally because they needed them for their economy. The light bulb went off. We have to keep those light bulbs going off. And I want you to know, I am meeting with opinion leaders who are opposed to us. And you know me. I'm from Brooklyn, right, Felix? And I meet, and I, when I have an issue, I'll keep pounding and pounding and pounding away until we succeed. We will succeed on immigration reform. We will. Not just for the good of the Latino community or the immigrant community, but for the good of America. Let's talk a minute about affordable housing. I want to say a word. She couldn't be here tonight, but she asked me to say hello to everybody. La Luchadora, our great Congresswoman, Nidia Velasquez. She and I were able to federalize the orphaned public housing. Every year now, public housing in New York gets an extra $75 million from the federal government to make sure that people can live at least a life of decency and the properties are properly staffed and maintained. On health care reform, I know that Felix Ortiz has talked about this. One out of every seven Latina teens in Brooklyn has attempted or committed suicide. How can we ignore mental health services as part of health care? When President Obama signed into law the most important expansion of the social safety net in a generation, we meant that these kind of services have to be maintained. We will not let the Republicans, the new hard right, come in and take our health care away. And finally, you've read about this new budget. It's amazing. They say they want to create jobs in America, and what do they do? They take away Pell Grants so that our young people who deserve to go to college can go. They say they want to help our young people, our younger children. They want to get rid of Head Start or cut Head Start so kids don't have a Head Start. They say they believe in people's health and they want to cut cancer research. And at the same time, they are unwilling to touch the subsidies to the oil companies. They are unwilling to repeal the Bush tax breaks for the millionaires. Who do they want to help? But I got in, I was pretty strong this week. I said that those hard right Republicans are extreme. Speaker Boehner, Majority Leader Cantor, and Kevin McCarthy attacked me for calling them extreme. Guess what? If the shoe fits, wear it. So I want to tell you loud and clear, not just on diversity, not just on immigration, not just on housing, not just on health care, not just on this new attempt to roll back 50 years of progress in these budget cuts the Republicans are trying to do. You have a friend, an ally, a compadre in the senior citizen, sorry, in the senior senator. From the state of New York, Dios te bendiga. God bless you and God bless this great Hispanic community.